get started. So I started the recording for me. Thank you very much. Um, so first, I just want to recognize SJSU for the opportunity and for this very interesting and fruitful conference. Uh, so thank you for that. I'm going to skip the where are you uh, exercise and just launch right into the talk. Um, I do have the chat window open, so go ahead and uh, chat if you want to or have questions. Um, okay, so I'm just going to pop in on the video here. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Link Swanson, and I am getting a dialog box about something. Uh, okay, I'll turn the video off. So I'm a systems engineer at Minitex. We're a library uh, consortia in Minnesota, and I'm also a PhD candidate in cognitive science at the University of Minnesota, where I study uh, perception, attention, and learning. And I am here today to share with you some thoughts that I have on strategies for learning blockchain and uh, specifically uh, for learning blockchain and um, targeting education materials to helping learners. So the idea for this talk came from uh, a Senate hearing on virtual currencies earlier this year, which I watched live, and something really caught my ear. So um, here's a quote uh, during testimony during the hearing. Uh, chairman of the CFTC uh, says this, America's libraries are a place where a lot of people go and research Bitcoin. One of the most frequently searched items from the library computer is Bitcoin. I have no idea if that's true or not or where he's getting the data, um, but uh, he continued on later in the hearing and he says, so we're teaming up with the uh, Consumer Finance Protection Bureau to go out to America's libraries and educate librarians who often get questions asked to direct patrons to use our Bitcoin website and other resources. We've never done as much work on consumer education as we've done with virtual currency. Um, so I looked and I asked, so what kind of blockchain education resources does CFTC offer? And at the time, I found this bifold brochure on Bitcoin basics. Um, so I asked uh, what really helps us learn blockchain. It got, got me thinking about uh, the sort of education strategies and uh, you know, what all is involved in approaching the topic. So, being a cognitive scientist, I started thinking about uh, what are the sort of conceptual barriers or cognitive barriers to understanding blockchain. And I came up with these items um, sort of as main cognitive barriers that I think are common. They come up a lot when you start hearing about blockchain and all of its applications and what it does and how different it is. Um, and so I've identified that the root of some of these cognitive barriers are that we habitually think in terms of centralized systems, and blockchain is very decentralized. Uh, but most of the systems we use are centralized, and so uh, it's, you know, we have these very habitual concepts based on centralized systems that we've been using for the majority of our uh, computing lives. Uh, and these systems also that we use, they also require trust. And so blockchain is trustless or does not require trust in other individuals on, on the network. Um, another one is that we are not very familiar with public key cryptography. Most of us don't really use public key crypt cryptography very often, uh, yet the concepts and the basic sort of functioning of, and use of public key cryptography are integral to blockchains as they've been implemented so far, and it is very difficult to really gain a solid understanding of how blockchain works that isn't sort of magical and mysterious if you don't uh, at least have some 
familiarity using public key cryptography. Uh, and finally, uh, we still do think in terms of proprietary software and corporate vendors uh, instead of open source principles. And so blockchain from the beginning was very, very, uh, is built out of open source uh, products and open source software and also through open source principles of design, uh, collaboration, and uh, the development. So uh, I then asked, uh, how should we attack these cognitive barriers? Like, how should uh, learning efforts be targeted to sort of uh, break through these? Um, so in this talk, I'm going to share with you five uh, strategies that I thought of that I think are practical and um, can go a long way towards sort of breaking out of some of these cognitive barriers. So uh, these are not necessarily sequential, uh, but they do go in sort of order of uh, difficulty or, or uh, complexity and experience. So uh, the first one is to just dig in and start using the blockchain. And the very first implementation of blockchain in a live and production environment is uh, cryptocurrency. So uh, you can actually just start using cryptocurrencies. And that actually goes a really long way. And just as an exercise, it goes a really long way to uh, help you to get familiar with how to use a blockchain and, uh, and just some of the basic principles uh, that you'll just gain just from experience. Uh, secondly, reading or watching a documentary it provides a good overview and history of Bitcoin, the first uh, live implementation of blockchain technology. Uh, it's important. The history of it really helps to uh, understand the concept as it has evolved, and uh, it is evolving fast, and so getting up to speed on the history of how it has emerged and, and different uh, aspects of its implementation so far uh, can be very helpful. Uh, the third strategy, I think, are uh, uh, is to learn about the component technologies of blockchain. I've heard in several of the talks so far that um, blockchain is a, a, a novel combination of a lot of existing technologies. And so what's nice about that is that while there might not be a lot of existing training materials or resources or publications on blockchain per se yet, um, its component technologies uh, can be researched. So you can find a lot of papers and books and training on uh, some of its component technologies. And I'm going to spend a fair amount of the talk on that. Uh, the fourth strategy is to actually participate in the blockchain by running a Bitcoin full node um, or other cryptocurrency full node on your own computer. You can just install the software and then um, it will just uh, sort of take you through a wizard and you can start You'll download the entire blockchain, all of the transactions that have ever occurred since the Genesis block it will be on your computer, and you can actually participate in the network that way. You learn a lot from doing that. And the fifth strategy is to create uh, novel uses for blockchains. And I think that that's kind of where this conference is very focused on. Um, and I'm arguing here that uh, in order to get to number five, where you're implementing novel uses for blockchains, um, that you know, going through these other sort of uh, self-education, learning, and by experience uh, practices can be very, very good and are, are necessary before we can do that. So let's get into these more. And I see the um, question on the chat about the documentary, and I do have that in uh, a subsequent slide here. So um, the main point of this is that we can't imagine novel uses for blockchains until we understand the basics. And so how do we understand the basics? I'm going to try to suggest some good ways to do that. Okay, so as I mentioned, the strategy one is to just start using cryptocurrencies. Just dig in. Um, this is based on the, on the logic that to understand how something works, we first must understand how to use it. Um, and I think that learners can understand blockchain blockchains with some cryptocurrency exercises. Now, these are just an example. This is something I think is necessary, but for example, you could install a desktop wallet on your local computer, go to an exchange, and buy a small amount of Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Ethereum 
ten dollars or so. Um, then you can send the funds from the exchange to your local desktop wallet. You get some experience in sending the transaction that way, and you can watch it uh, be deducted from your exchange wallet and add it to your desktop wallet. Um, and you can install a mobile wallet on your phone and send some funds from your desktop wallet to your mobile wallet. You could create a paper wallet and then send some funds to your paper wallet. Uh, and then you can also view the balances of your wallet's public addresses on the Block Explorer, um, which is a web-based interface that every blockchain or most blockchains have web-based interfaces to view transactions and addresses and balances on the Block Explorer so you can check out your own addresses and watch your uh, transactions and watch the balances be uh, deducted and added. Um, another exercise would be to back up your private keys from each wallet. It gets good uh, experience in understanding how private keys work and how to manage them and what they do for you on the blockchain, what they are in the blockchain. And uh, finally, you can go and buy goods and services for merchants who accept cryptocurrency. Um, there are a lot of people on Craigslist who sell things with cryptocurrency. There's Overstock.com. There's uh, quite a few other websites that actually list all the ways that you can spend your cryptocurrency. So that is my first strategy that I think is very effective. Um, and I think that part of education uh, material for blockchain in general could start with just using cryptocurrency. Um, and I think that that is a very productive learning exercise. Personally, it has been for me. The second strategy is to read or watch uh, Bitcoin Overview and History. Uh, an excellent one is the book Mastering Bitcoin, which is available for free on GitHub at the URL there, and it's also in the uh, references. And um, this documentary, Banking on Bitcoin, which uh, does provide some very nice uh, top-level conceptual explanations and also a very good history of, of Bitcoin. I, it, it is, it is uh, very informative in, in that way. So I think that those, uh, these two things can go a long way to sort of getting uh, oriented in where uh, these, these uh, concepts have emerged from and uh, some of the basics. So, and my third strategy that um, I think is often overlooked is uh, that, you know, again, blockchain is made of component technologies, and these are sort of standalone topics. So if somebody comes into a library or, or, or if somebody is wanting to develop education materials for blockchain, um, a lot of times they just look for blockchain. But what could be a good strategy would be to actually look at the component technologies. There's a lot of information on these component technologies. Uh, the first one being public key cryptography, as I mentioned, um, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer networks, distributed systems, and open source software principles. So uh, these uh, topics are good to keep in mind when trying to understand blockchain um, or to develop education materials or to point uh, in the case that the CFCT ch chairman uh, brought up when patrons are coming into libraries asking about Bitcoin or blockchain and how it works or how to research it. Um, in addition to the keyword Bitcoin or blockchain, these are other keywords that could be used to research uh, that. So my point here uh, has already been made. So these pre-existing technologies are what make up blockchain technology. So learn about those. Um, the fourth strategy, as I mentioned, running a full node. So you can become part of a live blockchain by running a full node. Um, this does take some computing resources and networking, and um, sometimes people install a full node and don't realize that they're doing that, and uh, they try to then it starts to try to download the entire blockchain to their computer, and they did not bargain for that. But um, in any case, it is a uh, learning experience and advanced one to understand how the network works. Uh, by installing and running a full node on your computer or server, uh, even if you're just doing it to experiment and learn. Um, and finally, uh, as blockchain is open source software, you can write code and modify and extend, view the code. Um, and you can also use existing public blockchain networks in novel ways, like create smart contracts or DMs. There's a lot of ways to do that that don't involve coding as well. Um, so, in summary, uh, I think these are very practical and uh, effective strategies 
for uh, developing blockchain education programs or uh, initial um, learning materials or just pointing people in these directions uh, when they ask to learn more. Um, and so I conclude that this uh, kind of a thing is what I think is a good starting point for developing those kinds of resources. And I really do hope that this um, helps others to become aware of sort of what these cognitive barriers are and uh, that these can be addressed with practical targeted strategies. So thanks a lot. Again, I'm Link Swanson. You can reach me, link at yeoman.eu. Um, my website is swanson.link. And I really appreciate your attention and your time. So uh, here are the references. And I'm going to uh, look through some of the questions here and some of the discussion, because uh, I did finish a little bit early, because I wanted to have some um, time for discussion. So um, Satoshi Nakamoto is asking, uh, Suggestions for blockchain training or reading for K through six. That's very interesting, actually, that you asked that because um, I have a a seven year old, and just this morning he was asking about you know what's my presentation on, and uh, his uh, mom started to explain what it was and to talk about blockchain. He had a lot of questions, so I think that this is uh, a very very good question, especially if blockchain turns out to be the sort of revolutionary platform that it is uh, looking like it might be. And um, it is not too complex for a K through six crowd to understand, I don't think. I think there are ways to do that. And I think that um, especially in uh, things like educational psychology, fields like that can really sort of have a lot of resources for developing these kinds of training materials. I personally don't have any suggestion um, for any materials right now. Um, although I did see there is a video out there on YouTube. I think it's by TechCrunch or Wired or something. Uh, oh, and I see there's some other ones from Kids Book to Explain Blockchain um, that's in the chat link there. but. Um, there was a contest for explaining concepts to various levels, and, and one of the editions of this contest was explaining blockchain to people at different levels, and I think that the K-6 crowd was the first level, and they did do a overview of blockchain for that. So um, check that out. And it, is, uh, it is on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> I'll add it into the resources if I can. Um, and so I'm just sort of scanning through some of the questions here. If you do have a question for me right now, I'll just go ahead and pop it into the chat again, because this is a large scrolling chat. Um, so documentaries. Blockchain sandbox, uh, explore things without risk. That's very interesting. Yes, they're called test nets. Um, and most blockchain developers will connect their uh, their node to a test net when they are making changes to the node, uh, to the software on the node, and they will connect to a test net. Um, you can uh, participate in a blockchain as a full node, though, without risk anyway. I mean, you can connect to the live main net without risk. You're not really risking anything in core. Uh, the blockchain itself is very resilient. Uh, that's part of one of its core features is that it cannot be messed up by someone who doesn't know what they're doing connecting to it. Um, and so I wouldn't be too afraid to connect a, a full node to the main net, um, even if you don't know what you're doing. Um, okay, so uh, I do have the slides on a Google presentation that I've put in the in the references here, um, and I also have a link to that uh, hearing, which was interesting. Um, and I'm also going to share another uh, line of thought that uh, is a little bit broader than what was in this talk, but. Um, that I think libraries could have a, a large role to play 
in um, in the in the vein of blockchain education and training. And um, if people come into the library wanting to know about this, um, uh, having a sort of package uh, where somebody could come in and they would get actually the software needed to use the wallet, and they would get a sort of set of uh, uh, reading material, and maybe, the, maybe a documentary or something like that, and uh, sort of just an empowerment package for using uh, both cryptocurrencies and other implementations of blockchain. I think that that could be really good. Um, so uh, another question. So I'm not sure if you may have an opinion on this, but uh, what do you think blockchain can do for open access, open research data, open education, et cetera? Um, I think that it can do a lot for that. Um, being decentralized and not having a central point of authority or gatekeeper um, opens things up. And I think that uh, both in the sense of being able to publish research uh, with a verified um, uh, identity uh, into a public venue that cannot be modified uh, or tampered with is very powerful. And from the consumption side, from the consuming research, um, being able to uh, access this research and know that it is verified by, by consensus rules um, is also very powerful. And I mentioned consensus rules. The consensus rules for cryptocurrencies sort of uh, make transactions valid, uh, but I could see to where the similar consensus rules could be used for peer review. And uh, you could sort of have a blockchain mechanized peer review process that would uh, be universal and sort of uh, enforced by some of the same types of consensus rules that the transaction uh, for cryptocurrencies are enforced by. So those are just some sort of off the top of my head answers to your question about that. Um, and I got a request to provide a clickable link. Yes, Blackboard makes everything into a JPEG, so all the links in my presentation are not clickable. Um, and in particular, my slides. <laughs> As a Google ID on this, so you probably don't want to type all that. Uh, but luckily, I have it open right here, so I can just uh, I see there's already three people anonymous animals in there right now. So here you go. Um, I will label it. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. And do feel free to contact me. Uh, about any ideas in the presentation. I would like to develop them further. Um, and so if you have your own ideas about this, uh, that would be, it would be great to hear that. Uh, I'm envisioning a sort of uh, onboarding uh, process that will empower people in a very clear and uh, simple experience driven and in a way that does not turn them off right away. That's fun and sort of very much practical. So um, the kids book on Bitcoin. Thank you for that. I'm going to check that out for sure. Um, OK. Well, just going to check through the chat here to see if there are any other questions. and. Um, Great. This looks like some really good doc, uh, material being shared on there. And Nicole says, thanks for the presentation. <laughs> Great book for me. Yeah, actually, it should be good uh, to see a 11-year-old uh, author, a book for kids. Uh, could be actually a really good starting point. All right, you are welcome. I am very excited to be uh, working on this kind of a project, and I think that uh, th this approach is very uh, 
underexplored and is very, very much needed. So, thanks everyone. I appreciate it. I am going to uh, just close the uh, room here in a minute. I will uh, wait just a second and see if anyone else has any other thoughts or questions. And then I'll close it out so the recording can process. Thanks, everyone.